Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream on Twitch weekdays from 5pm Pacific Time in the US, midday in Australia and 1am in the UK. Uh, we are going to be continuing working on our Art Deco building that we're doing in the Unreal Engine 4.18. Yesterday, we were working on the garden terrace here. We added this um, decorative central piece to the terrace just to fill it up a bit because it was looking a bit empty. And today we're going to continue finishing off this uh, terrace section by adding a couple of stone benches either side. So we'll have one over there and one over there. Uh, do remember, if you've got any questions for me, please feel free to pop into chat and ask me. Um, if you just want to pop into chat and say hello, that's always welcome. But if you just want to watch, then that's completely fine. Uh, also remember, if you are not a Twitch subscriber to my channel, then you can't post links in chat, Twitch chat. But we do have a Discord server where everyone can post links. If you just type exclamation Discord in Twitch chat, you'll get an invite link to join the Discord server. Okay. So let's jump straight into Max and look at the bench we're going to be bringing in. Now, I originally designed this um, stone bench. Hey, Contig. <laughs> 100 Contigi says 120 textures into three, right? It's actually 41 textures, Contigi. You're cheeky. Um, so we're going to be condensing 41 textures that make up this bench into three. So you got the three part correct. Uh, again, I, when I designed this bench originally, it's, it's one that you can buy from uh, the creative market from my 3D store. I designed it to be used in Max or Maya or Blender, one of those 3D rendering programs to be rendered in a scene using V-Ray, Mental Ray, that type of thing. It was never actually designed for a game model. So what I have done though is I've reduced it from, the original model was about a million polygons, I've reduced that down to, um, I think it's probably about 50,000. It's still quite a lot, but it should be okay. We're using it twice in the level. So we're not going to be using a thousand of them in the level so it should be should be fine uh, but it does use 41 textures which we need to reduce down because the more textures you have on a game model the more draw calls you're going to use and that's going to start to slow down the game engine so you want to reduce draw calls as much as possible and that's what we're going to be doing today so we're going to take this bench using 41 textures and, con and uh, condense it down to just three textures Well, thank you, uh, Kenneth Gaines, for hosting me. That's very good of you. Thank you very much. Uh, again, I appreciate it, guys, when you host my channel. Um, it's, it's incredibly helpful, and thank you. So, yes, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to reduce this bench down from 41 textures to 3 textures using 3D Studio Max and a program called Unfold 3D. Uh, now, Unfold 3D is just a texture wrapping program. I can pop a link in chat if you guys want to know more about it. I have talked about it before on the stream and I've used it uh, so far in the uh, Unreal level we've been working on. <laughs> of course. Well, thank you, Kenneth. I do appreciate it. And thanks for popping into chat and saying hi. Um, it lets me know that you guys are there. That's why I like it when you pop in and say hello in chat. Even if you don't have a question for me, it just lets, lets me know that there's someone out there watching me. Uh, I'm sure there is. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we did use um, Unfold 3D to do some unwrapping on pieces of furniture that we brought into the Art Deco building in our Unreal level. Uh, again, I'm just sort of, I'll just move through my level here a little bit for anyone that's new to my channel and hasn't seen what we are working on. So today, like I said, we're going to finish doing this uh, terrace section here. But we do have a full environment, all wind animated using Speed Tree trees and plants. Uh, and then we have our Art Deco building, if I can get around this tree here, which is also, uh, we're going to be fully furnishing. It's it's almost done. We've only got a few rooms left to furnish. Uh, one of them being this front room. The other one being this top front room. Uh, we've got just a couple of pieces of furniture left to add in the main dining room. Uh, we've done our hallway section, so that's furnished and good to go. We've done our room down here, so that's all furnished up and also good to go. 
Uh, we've done this uh, whole section through here, so that's okay. We do have this room to furnish as well. I'll probably put a dining table in there. And we have furnished up our back sections through here. So, just a few more rooms to furnish up and then we can set up our cameras and start creating our cinematic. Because that's what we're making, we're making a cinematic in the Unreal Engine. So let's just jump back to that garden terrace because that is where we're working today. Uh, I will do a final pass over the environment and the building once I've got all the furniture pieces in just to make sure that uh, everything looks good. So just a polish pass, they usually call it in games development. So that's that's the plan of action anyway. Hey Sniper Echo, good to see you buddy. I am doing very well, thank you very much. I hope you're doing well as well. Uh, I hope the, the launch on the Xbox went okay. I haven't asked you about that since before Christmas, Sniper. So I hope all of that went well for you and I, I hope the project is going well as well. I'm not stressing out or anything like that. Remember, if if you need any help at all, just ask me, Sniper Echo. That goes for any of you guys. If I'm on Twitch to encourage you guys to do 3D, uh, and if I can uh, help you in any way, I'm happy to try. Don't know everything, don't pretend to know everything, but willing to give it a go. I'm just going to grab a quick drink, guys, because I'm a little bit thirsty. I get a really dry mouth by talking all the time. I mean, you'd think I'd be used to it because I am such a chatterbox, but still. <laughs> Alrighty, let's jump back into Max and let's get this um, bench organized. Now what I've done here is I've broken up the bench into the three parts that I want the three different textures to be. Uh, hey, Smokeberry Barbecue. <laughs> How are you, buddy? Good to see you. Good to see all you guys in chat. Cause like I said, it lets me know you guys are there. Uh, Sniper says just a supporter. <laughs> You're crazy, Smurfberry. You are cray cray. <laughs> you smell the bones, but something, something I like rum. Android Lust, good to see you. How are you? Thanks for popping into chat as well and saying hi. Like I said, it really, uh, I love it when you guys pop into chat and talk to me because it helps uh, make Twitch a much more enjoyable thing to be doing. It lets me know that you're there. Um, so what I've done here with this model that uses 41 textures that we're converting down to three is I've broken it up into three pieces and each piece represents what I want each one texture to be. So we'll have one texture for the main part of the seat one separate texture for this uh, decorative work that we've got going on through here because I want to keep that a higher resolution. I don't want to lose any resolution in that. And if I combine that with that, because that's such a large object, we're going to start losing resolution on this central panel. So to avoid that, I'm going to make that its own texture. And then a separate texture here for the base, which um, is a separate thing because it, gave, it gives us the option then to use the bench without the base or use it together as a set. So that's what we're doing. That's, that's, that's the game plan at the moment. Three different objects with three different textures. Um, let's start with the uh, decorative inlay, I think. So I'm just going to select it. And I have this plugin that you can download for free from the company Unfold3D's website that you can install in Macs or they make one for Cinema 4D as well. If you don't have that little plug-in though, you just open up the program and import your model that way. This just makes it a bit easier for me to work in. So at the moment, this uh, object is using um, uh, UV Map 1. So I'm going to open up Unfold 3D with a new channel. I'll just give that a minute to open and move our model across. I'm going to cut that. Actually, before I do that, what I'm going to do here is under the uh, UV channel in Unfold 3D, we have to create a new channel. I'm going to call it um, UV Channel 2. We have to select it and um, we've got to set it as the current channel. 
if we don't do that, we're going to be overriding channel one and we can't do that because we have to take it back into Max to move the texture across to the new UVs. So we have our new UV channel two created and set as the current. I'm going to do a quick cut on the mesh and unfold and optimize. And that should be good. That's all we need to do. This is why I love this program. It makes unwrapping stuff incredibly easy, quick and simple. You don't need to use it. You can do it all in the 3D program. Um, this just saves a lot of time. So I'm just going to send that back to Max now by going save. Now you'll notice the UVs we messed up. There we go. To fix that, all we have to do is uh, delete this UV channel one. Now I'm going to do an unwrap. I'm going to use map channel two. I'm going to abandon the UVs, not move them. Otherwise it'll copy the UVs from channel one. But now if we open up the UV editor, we can, whoa, that's not right. Let me just, let me just go back a few steps here. Map channel two, abandon. Open UV editor. There we go. Uh, important tip there: don't don't delete UV channel two at uh, one. Sorry, unfold channel one until you've actually put an unwrap on. Otherwise, the UVs will be lost. That's what happened just then. But now we've got our UVs set up. That's good to go. Um, to get our original texture back, all we have to do now is uh, now we should be able to delete channel two. Uh, sorry, channel one. If I go back to my unwrap and double check to make sure it hasn't messed anything up, that's fine. So don't un don't delete the unfold 3D UV1 channel until you put an unwrap on, then you can delete it. All right, let's select the base, which is the next thing we'll move on to. And I'll send that over to unfold 3D. Okay, let's uh, play around with some of the settings here now. Turn on distribution control and we'll see what it does automatically for us. It's not too bad. Let's do a uh, cut, an unfold and an optimize. You can always check these things by uh, turning on the texture sampling here. That'll show you what your UVs are like, the density. That looks good. Um, we'll just pack it. It's okay. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't overlapping our UVs at all. So now we can save it again, send it back to Max. I'll go through this procedure one more time because the last time I messed it up a little bit. You will notice that the UVs are messed up. Don't delete. Uh, you know what I forgot to do, don't you? I forgot to actually um, to add a new channel inside of Unfold 3D. It's okay, we'll just undo and send it over again. <laughs> Great one. Now I'll go through it again. We'll start fresh with this one. We have our, um, our mesh. The first thing, the very first thing you need to do is create a new UV channel. I forgot that step just then. You can call it anything you want. Um, I like to call it UV channel two. That saves me from getting completely confused. Once you've done that though, you must select it and set it as the current channel. Pay no attention. It just hasn't been mapped yet in this viewport. So, but you must make sure you set channel two as the current channel. Uh, now we can do our unwrap and our cut. Let's do a quick pack. Now we can send it back. It will be show a messed up UV, but we'll fix that in just a sec. Okay. So before we delete channel one, which is the original one, we want to throw down an unwrap, move it to channel two, 
uh, abandon the UVs, otherwise it'll move the messed up one from channel 1. Again, I just always like to double check that it has done that correctly and that's fine. Uh, now we can select channel 1 and delete it. And that gets our UVs back, but we still have the, the, um, the new UVs from channel 2. Okay, so we've remapped the base, we've remapped the um, the inlay, and now we need to do the main part of the chair. And this one's going to be a bit more complex because there's a lot more geometry here. So, first thing we do is uh, send it over to Unfold 3D. So yeah, if you've got questions, because I know I got a bit mi mix mixed up there for you guys, pop in the chat and ask me and I can go through it uh, a bit more clearly for you. All right. So I think what we're going to do here is we're going to go into object mode, or sub-object mode I should call it. We might start with these uh, handrail pieces because they're a bit more complex than the rest of it. Somebody's cooking bacon, I can smell it. Love bacon, love it. Uh, actually, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the entire piece. making sure I haven't forgotten anything here. I think we've got it all. Yep. We'll find out soon if, I, if I've forgotten any bit. Uh, I'm going to go into uh, isolate mode. And now we're going to play around with uh, unwrapping this. So we'll try the automatic, the first automatic tool. I'm just going to give it a minute up here to uh, work out the unwrap. Skillion, Skillion, sorry, Skillion. Hey, which this is uh, a program called Unfold 3D. Uh, it's a all it does is um, texture mapping but it does it very well and it does it automatically. Uh, and like I said, you don't need to use a third party tool to do it, but it just uh, makes your job much easier. Hmm. I'm not completely sold on that unwrap, so I'm just going to undo that and we'll see what the other unwrap options give us. It has three automatic unwrap options. Uh, Skillion, no, I, I do my modeling in 3D Studio Max. So, uh, this model, which is an, a stone, an antique stone bench, was I modeled up in Max. Uh, I, and I'm using Unfold 3D just to do the unwrapping. Uh, so, yeah, that's the model we're working on at the moment. Uh, Crosswind, hey, uh, says, um, man, I need, I needed this. I always uh, hated that new unwrapping. Yeah, me too. One of the, the, I love doing 3D. You guys know that. I've, I've done 3D for more than 15 years. It's my job and I love it. But the, the one thing I hate, I hate about 3D modeling is unwrapping. I hate UV mapping. It's one of the most cumbersome, time-consuming, and mind-numbing things you can do in 3D. 
it's incredibly important to get a model to look good, to get it textured properly, to have it unwrapped well. Uh, but it's really not something I enjoy doing. So anytime I can get it done much more quickly, I'm in, I'm all for it. And uh, this program, Unfold 3D, does it incredibly well. Uh, again, I'll, I'll um, throw a link in chat so you guys can check it out on your own time. Uh, you can rent it. You don't have to buy it. It's not incredibly expensive if you do want to buy it. Uh, and if you hate unwrapping like I do, it's something that's uh, really worthwhile. That's the link to this software that I'm using. Uh, there are two. There's one called Virtual Spaces and Real Spaces. You want the Virtual Spaces one if you're doing games. Uh, the other one is for if you do CAD modeling. But you can check it out on their website, read up on it. They do have a free version you can download, fully functional. I believe it's um, for 30 days. You get one month to use it. You need to register to download it, but give them a throwaway email address if you don't want to give them your real one, like Yahoo or Gmail. Uh, try it out, see if you like it, if, if, see if it's useful to you. And if it is, then you can uh, purchase it through their store. Uh, again, it's, you can rent it if you only need it for a month or two for a, a project, a short-term project, you don't want to, and you don't want to buy it. Or, or if you want to buy it, it's not incredibly expensive. Uh, and it's really great. Uh, Android Lust says, um, UV unwrapping, very time consuming. Going to try, try, do try the software out, guys. Like I said, you've got nothing to lose if you download the trial. Uh, it's fully functional trial for 30 days. So download it, install it, try it, see if you like it. I love it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. It does, it gets my work done so much more quickly than having to do it all by hand. Uh, and as you can see, it, it not only does hard surface modeling, you can do organic stuff as well, character work uh, unwrapping. So, yep, great software. I couldn't live without it now. Uh, prior to this, I used to use a program called Hedis UV Layout, which is also very good. It's just I don't like that interface. They need to update their interface because it looks like something from the 80s. Hedis, that is. Um, but as far as an unwrapping program goes, if you don't mind the interface, it's another great program. Uh, I believe it's developed by a guy here in Australia. Uh, this one, though, does the job just as well as heaters, and the interface is lovely to use. So this is my preferred unwrapping tool now. And believe me, I've tried them all. Over the years, I have tried every one that has come to market. Uh, we'll see what this does. I'm going to do a cut here, and uh, we'll do an unwrap and an optimize. Not great, but that'll do for what we want. Again, we can check it here with the um, with the texture sample, and that's that should be fine. Um, Skillion's asking, is there a reason you use Max over Maya? Not really. Um, a bit of my background, I used to work in games development, then I went to work in film, and now I work as an ArchViz artist, architectural visualization, and the ArchViz industry used Max pretty much exclusively. Uh, the games industry used Max and Maya, um, and Blendem also now as well. And the film industry, well, they use whatever you want, really. Uh, but so I've just... And I also went to university to study uh, programming and design, and I was taught at university to use Max. That, that's the software the uni chose to teach us. And I guess just ever since I've used Max, <laughs> no reason. I, I'm not a person that says one soft, one 3D program is better than the other. They are all equally good. So there is no difference between a lot of them now. There, Blender, which is a free 3D program, you don't pay any money for it at all in my opinion, is just as good as Max or Maya or Cinema 4D or Soft Image or Soft Image, whatever you want to call it. They're all very good now. Sniper says UE 4.19 preview has dropped. Yeah, I checked it out this morning just before the stream, Sniper. I was uh, having a look at it. So, yeah, uh, it, it's a, again, it, the, the new 4.19 of Unreal, guys, is just a preview build, so they don't recommend it for a project you're working on if it's time critical. Uh, and I generally don't don't use the preview builds until it hits uh, actual release, just because I don't want any bugs while I'm working. 
<laughs> slap sniper echo slap don't ask phil about zbrush unless you want to rant you want me to rant for a half an hour i'm happy to rant the running joke about zbrush on my on my channel you guys know i love zbrush as a program it's incredibly good there's nothing really like it apart from mudbox which autodesk don't make uh, don't update anymore just the interface i hate the interface <laughs> You, you sniper echo, oh. Get me started on ZBrush. Oh, um, I just didn't want to do that. That, that, that was a mistake. <laughs> I, I, I forgot that we were doing a whole bench and not just part of a bench. It's okay. This is the great thing about this program. I can redo what I've just done incredibly quickly. So the, again, the first thing we need to do is we need to create a new UV set. Once it loads it in, there we go. I may have forgotten to do this as well. I'm very absent-minded today. Uh, so we're going to create a new UV, calling it UV Channel 2. Whoa, that's never happened in this program before, so that's very strange. It may be because I was um, using this model previously. It may have had a problem. You know what, well, just to be on the safe side, we're just going to do a quick save here in Max because I don't want to risk anything. We'll try that again. Yeah. Let's send it back to Unfold. Uh, Skillian says, oh, I see, um, you're in your first year at uni uh, and in college both they're taught as my, yeah, it depends on the university you're uh, studying at as to what 3D software they will, um, they will use. Um, and it depends on the sort of study you're doing, what the subject, like the course is. If you're doing games development stuff or a games course, they're probably going to use Maya, uh, even though Max is used in studios, game studios as well. Usually what happens in a game studio, if you want to work in games, is uh, the studio will have licenses for both Maya and Max because they're all made by Autodesk. Uh, and they give you the choice as to which one you prefer to use. So when you start with the studio, a lot of every studio I've worked at has given me the choice, put it that way. They'll say to you, do you want to use Max or do you want to use Maya? And usually it's a mixture of about half and half of people that use Max and, and other half use Maya. Your course is called animation. Oh, uh, animation! Maya, all of the all of the guys, all of my friends, and every animator I've worked with has preferred to use Maya to do animation. Uh, we've spoken. I've spoken about this on my stream before. Maya, uh, the the tools for animators in Maya. Well, I, I won't say they're better than Max, but not that I've found. But I'm not an animator. But my animator friends have said that they prefer the tools built into Maya as opposed to Max. Even though Max's animation tools are very good, they just tend to prefer Maya. Um, as an, because I don't, I'm not an animator. I, I can't really speak to that too much. But I've um, the small amount of animation work I've done, I've never had a problem using Max. But yeah, animators tend to prefer Maya. Not saying that Max is bad for animation, but animators tend to prefer Maya. Go figure. Uh, but they're both very good. All right, let's try this one more time. Let's try and create a new UV channel. UV channel 2. It could be because the model uh, does not like it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to close Max down and I think reopen it. Just before I do that, actually, what I think I might do is um, break the model up a little bit. It might be better. We'll see if it is a problem with the model being too complex for the program or uh, just an error that's happening between Unfold here and, and Max. The easiest way for me to do that will be to just to separate up this model a little bit more. We can re recombine it all uh, later on. So we have the back section and the seat section. 
Uh, I'm just going to do a detach here. And as a test, I'm going to send that back section over to Unfold3D and see if it still has a problem. Again, the person that made the plugin here that I'm using in Max gives it away for free on Unfold3D's website. Uh, and they did say in their comments that there may be some um, some problems in the plugin that they didn't catch when they were doing their debugging. So it's a new plugin. It hasn't been fully tested, so it could be a problem there. I don't, I don't want to blame the program uh, because I've never had it generally crash on me. Uh, but we'll do a test here on, on this back section by, again, creating a new UV channel. Okay, I'm going to set it as the current. I have a feeling it's the plugin doing it, not the not the program, not Unfold3D. We can do it this way though, We can, and I'll combine them back in Max. Uh, so we have the back section and the seat section of that, so I'm going to try this automatic cut. Let me just see what the other ones give us. No, I don't like that one. No, I don't like that one. The first one I think was the best. I might just turn off distribution control. We'll do a cut and unwrap and an optimize. That's looking okay. We're in channel two, so I just want to do a repack. And let's send that back to Max. Uh, is it Sivioni? My apologies if I get your usernames wrong, guys. I'm, regulars to my channel know that I'm terrible when it comes to your usernames. My apologies if I mispronounced it. Uh, Sivioni, I think. Thank you. I'm glad you like the model. Mesh Fusion. Hey, you wish Autodesk would let you own let you own a product instead of rent it now. Yeah, me too. Uh, uh, they've only done that within the last few years. It's the same as Adobe. You, you, can, you can't buy their software anymore. You've got to rent it. No, I hate this, that rental model because you never own it. And as soon as you stop paying your, your monthly or yearly fees, uh, you can't use it anymore. So I agree with you. I think it's very annoying. I know it might be good for people who only want to do projects occasionally, but for me, I don't like it. Yeah, Mesh Fusion, you're exactly right. Most software programs do seem to be going that way now. Like, even when it comes to Microsoft Office, which is, you know, really boring, I still prefer to own it as opposed to rent Office 365. It, I don't like the rental model, but a lot of companies are not giving you a choice anymore. Autodesk being one, uh, Adobe being another. Knackerbags, good to see you too. How are you? I'm glad you love the stream. I love you guys too, and I appreciate you guys being here and watching me. It's incredibly good of you. Uh, like I say to you guys all the time, there's so many people streaming on Twitch. It's uh, very humbling to know that you guys want to sit here and listen to this rat bag rabbit rabbit on. So thanks, guys. Uh, and I try to make my streams as uh, helpful as I can. <laughs> um. Skillion says, do you model characters? No, I don't. I don't do characters at all. Uh, I've only ever... Uh, when I worked in games development and film, I was an environment artist. Uh, I was also a technical artist. Uh, and now that I do Archbiz work, I'm more of an environment artist for them, uh, specialising in photogrammetry, which is why with the next project we work on after this uh, Unreal level will be uh, me creating a new model for my 3D store and I'll be using photogrammetry to, as part of that model. So I want to go through photogrammetry with you guys then as well. Sibioni uh, says, yeah, I hate how every program requires a subscription nowadays. Me too. Um, Chiotara, hey. Hey, Chiotara, good to see you. Uh, says, I'm glad that they uh, aren't charging the USD $20,000 for module they used to charge for power animator. Well, see, this is this is the um, catch twenty two with this sort of stuff. No one, I, I don't like the subscription model. I I want to own the software, um, but for people that don't need to use 
Photoshop, say, all the time, it, it, it works out cheaper for them because they can just lease it for a month or two to do whatever project they're working on and, and, and that's all they need, uh, which is fine. Uh, and it has brought down the, the cost of using software like Photoshop or any of the Adobe uh, software or Macs even. It's just the fact you never own it. And if you use it a lot, you're always going to have to keep renting it. That, that's the thing I don't like. It's okay for the occasional user or the business that only needs to use it occasionally. But if you're a professional and you use the software every day, all day, it works out more expensive in the long run and you never own it. That's, that's the thing I don't like about it. I can see how it's good for some people though. I'm not, you know, but for me, I don't like it. Mind you, the studio generally buys my software. So <laughs> um, not that I don't buy my own software as well, but anything the studio don't use or I want to use, but I'm lucky in that regard that the uh, studio I work for because I do work from home as well as going into the studio, uh, they allow me to, um, to they, they pay for the licenses for the software I use at home, uh, which is why you see that I've got software that, that's quite expensive and stuff I probably, if I was just working on my own at home, wouldn't buy. Um, yeah. I'm not keeping up with my, um, my notifications. Skillion, thank you very much for following the channel. Very much appreciate it. Thank you. And also to Sevioni, thank you as well for following the channel, guys. It's incredibly good of you, and uh, I do appreciate it. So thank you. Again, uh, I stream on a Monday and a Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific in the United States. My schedule never changes. It's every week on a Monday, Tuesday at 5 p.m. And uh, there's a countdown to my streams below my Twitch video feed here on my Twitch page uh, to when the next stream will be in your time zone if you're just not in the U.S., Australia where I am, or in the UK. Yeah, I hate it too, Android Lust, how Adobe went with subscription. Uh, Crosswind says, I don't like the uh, subscriptions either, but if they're going to do it, then they should at least make it a bit more reasonable. Autodesk charges pretty high rates. Yeah, they do. Um, even Adobe, though, can be pretty pricey if you go for the full suite, if you want to rent it from them. Uh, Mesh Fusion says I'm using Moto 10. Uh, not sure about going 11, but I believe you have to. You have the. You have the op You have to option to own or rent still for now. You know it's interesting. Even Autodesk do still allow perpetual license. Uh, it's a bit. It depends on the on the business on the company, uh, but some companies Autodesk are still allowing what they call a perpetual license, where you don't rent it, you own it. How long they allow that for, I don't know, because this rental model with Autodesk is only is relatively new. It's only been the last couple of years. Uh, and to stop people from complaining too much, they've given businesses a couple of year a couple of years to get used to renting it. So they still allow perpetual licenses. Uh, but that's on a business by business basis and it's up to Autodesk as to whether they do that or not. But they want to push everyone onto subscription. Don't get me wrong, that's what they want. You want to be an environment artist too? Uh, Colio. Is it Colio? Colec. <laughs> Again, my apologies if I mispronounce your name. And thank you as well for following the channel. Colec. Is it Colec? I'll, I'll say Colec, but if I'm, I'm incorrect, my apologies up front. Thank you for the follow. I do appreciate it. And being an environment artist, yeah, that's something I've always... Like I, was an, like I said, I was a technical artist and an environment artist. Um, I mainly do environment art now at the uh, studio that I work at and it's something I've always loved doing. I love making worlds like environments, buildings, all that sort of stuff really appeals to me, uh, which is why I've never done character art. I, I'm not a character artist and I'm not an animator either. Um, I've, we've always, every studio I've worked at have had character artists, animators, environment artists. And Stuart Tara, thank you for the host as well. Again, guys, it's incredibly good of you to host my channel and I really do appreciate it. So thank you very much. Uh, yeah, and uh, Colic says uh, Autodesk killed Softimage. That pissed me off. I didn't use Softimage, Soft Image, however you want to pronounce it, personally. Uh, but I do know a lot of people did and it was an incredibly good 3D piece of software. Uh, so a lot of people were really annoyed when Autodesk purchased it and killed it. And they're doing the same thing with Mudbox. They um, 
they purchased Mudbox, they developed it for a couple of years and now they're letting it die. Uh, I, I don't get that. I don't understand why a business spends however much money they, they do to, to buy the other software company just to kill it all. It just seems weird to me. Now maybe they will argue that you can only have so many pieces of 3D software in the market otherwise it, it just starts to break the market up too much. Fine. Okay, I get that from a business point of view. Uh, it still doesn't make sense to me, and it's uh, really annoying for people that uh, spend years and years and years learning a piece of software for Autodesk to come along and kill it all and then make those people learn a new piece of 3D software. Uh, now, again, I've said to you guys, the hardest part about doing 3D is learning the software and learning the interface because they can be quite complex. Uh, once you've learned the interface, then that's that's you know 80% of the of the work of doing 3D modeling really. Um, so forcing people to learn a new piece of 3D software is really annoying. And if Autodesk ever kill Max, I will be ropeable. Let me tell, I will be ropeable. Uh, not that I think they ever would, because Max makes them too much money. It's used in the Archbiz field extensively. It integrates with CAD really well, and uh, yeah, it makes Autodesk a huge amount of money. I think what they're more likely to do is to start to merge Maya and Max together into one program. I think that's what they're going to do eventually. Don't quote me, I don't know any insider information, but if I was to guess, I would say that Autodesk plan to merge Max and Maya together in some new 3D thing. Autodesk have a habit of buying other companies and integrating it into their software instead of writing new stuff. Uh, which is interesting, this program Unfold 3D, that Autodesk bought the rights to use the algorithms that software uses inside of Max, not the full algorithm, so that's why the program is still good to have, because it's a very cut down version of Max, but they purchased the rights to use the software inside of Max a few years ago, uh, a, a cut down version of the software. Sorry guys, I'm just catching up on chat here, I'm a bit, bit slow. Uh, Mesh Fusion says I'd be happy if they let us buy Max 2015 and still not sure what the last non-subscription version was. I, but I believe 2015 was pretty much the last non-sub version of it, or it may have been 2016, but it was one of those two. Unless you're a company that does a special deal with Autodesk to get a perpetual license, but even that's not going to be around for much longer. Uh, Tuatara says sadly, uh, Tuatara sorry says sadly can't. Day, you got to take the kids cycling. Might be back later. Well, thanks for popping in to Atara. It was good to see you. I'm sorry, I, I just caught up with your message there. Uh, Smurfy Barbecue says, uh, like I can pretty easily afford to pay for stuff like Substance or Marmoset tool bag, etc. But it's hard to get a Maya license. Yeah, Maya and Max are very expensive. Um, they are. I'm not going to lie. They're expensive because they're used professionally in a lot of studios. It's the same with. Um, with uh, Adobe stuff, it's expensive as well. And again, that's because they know that every designer needs to use it. So they can pretty much charge what they want. Uh, which is why you've got programs like Blender, which is completely free. And even, just because it's free doesn't mean it's bad, because it's just as good as every other 3D piece of software. I don't want you guys to think that you need to spend thousands of dollars to buy Max or Maya. You don't. I do remember though, if you're a student or you have, if you've got a student email, wink wink you can you can um, get a student license from Autodesk which is a fully functional license for three years that includes Maya and Max and a lot of other software that Autodesk make as well so if you're a student and you have a student email you can get a free three-year license from Autodesk well I'm pretty sure you still can you used to be able to again I haven't checked it this year in case they've changed it but I don't think they have uh, and that's like a perpetual license where you are uh, they you enter your key that they give you and the software is valid for three years. You can't create anything commercially with it, so you can't make stuff you want to sell. Um, or, but you can certainly use the software free for three years. But you must be a student. Uh, that's just for those people that don't want to use Blender. But I, again, I don't, think, I don't see why you wouldn't want to because it's free and it's just as good. Um, let me catch up on the chat here, guys. Uh, uh, Sevioni says, at what point would you go from an educational Autodesk license to a paid license? Uh, well, 
generally what you'd do is you'd, you'd uh, get the Autodesk educational license while you're studying, so while you're going to university or school, not just uni, they do it for um, high school students and stuff as well. So while, you, while you're going to school, you get a, a, uh, an educational license for this three years from Autodesk and you use the software because th- they do that. So th- they're assuming when, you, when you're at school, you're using an, an Autodesk product 